Outbreak mode in Black Ops Cold War is one of the most love it or hate it modes in all of Call of Duty Zombies. Many praise the mode for its innovation and claim that it's a new direction that zombies should go in or that it should be another pillar alongside the regular round base content. Others condemn the mode for being poorly designed, bloated, and straying way too far from what made zombies great. Since we're only a few days away from the reveal of Modern Warfare 3, and there are many rumors that Outbreak Mode is going to return in it, I think now would be a good time for me to give my thoughts on the Outbreak Mode as it exists in Cold War. Now, I do want to preface this by saying that I am fully aware that there are plenty of bugs and technical issues present in Outbreak, but I want to keep my discussion of that to a minimum because I want to focus more on the design aspects of Outbreak and how it could potentially improve from Modern Warfare 3. And there really isn't much more I can say on how they can improve that in Modern Warfare 3 other than just don't release the game in a buggy broken state like you did with Cold War. But let's get into the design of Outbreak. You start off by spawning into one of eight open regions. Your goal here is to complete a main objective, which is randomized from a set of them. These include things like escorting rovers, defending a DASA uplink station, getting transported into the equivalent of a box map from World at War custom zombies and having to hold out for a few minutes, collecting ethereum canisters and bringing them to a rocket for extraction, among others. These objectives will not trigger until you reach the specified location on the map and interact with some object to initiate it. Upon completion of your objective, you will receive a bunch of points and and then you'll be directed to an exit beacon. Upon arriving at the beacon, it'll spawn a bunch of objects for you to gear up, such as a Wonderfizz machine, pack-a-punch, crafting table, and armory station. You can then interact with the beacon to either travel to the next region and do another objective, which will increase in difficulty the further you go, or you can extract to end the game. Extraction here works the same as it does in Cold War's round base mode. Basically, do you want to keep playing, or do you just want to call it quits? That sums up all you're required to do in Outbreak, but there are also side objectives. These are completely optional, but will give you rewards upon completion. Like the main objectives, they are drawn from a pool of set side objectives, and you'll have about three of them in each region. The reward you get for completing them is dependent on the side objective itself. For example, there's one where you have to feed a dragon to fuel a rocket, and after the time limit expires, the rocket will fly away, leaving behind a loot crate. The quality of the loot crate is dependent on how much you fuel the rocket, and to fuel the rocket, you gotta feed zombies to the dragon head. If you fill it up all the way, you'll get some nice rewards such as higher tier weapons, alternate pack-a-punch abilities, and a whole bunch of equipment, and possibly even a perk if you're lucky. The red Ethereum Crystal objective sees you hunting down Ethereum crystals that you need to destroy in the time limit. If you're successful, it'll drop a Dark Aether wrench, which you can then use to upgrade the rarity of your weapon without spending any salvage. The Horde objective sees you eliminating a small horde of enemies, always led by a special enemy with beefed up health. Upon defeating the Horde, you'll be given several drops, as well as a random perk drop. I won't go through every side objective, but you get the point. Much like the main objectives, the side objectives see zombies constantly spawning around you while you try to complete it. Doing the main and side objectives is pretty much the meat and potatoes of Outbreak. While the region itself is infested with zombies as well as special enemies, they're not going to be constantly spawning around you unless you're actively doing objectives. And unfortunately, this is really where the cracks start to show with Outbreak. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it right now, I am not a big fan of Outbreak. At least, not as it exists in Cold War. I do think that it has a strong enough foundation, though, that a future game could take the ideas from Cold War and implement them in a much more competent way. Which is why I'm excited to see what Modern Warfare 3 can do with a sequel to Outbreak, provided, of course, that the rumors that Outbreak 2.0 is gonna be a thing in MW3 are actually true and not just a lie somebody pulled out of their ass, which, knowing Call of Duty rumor channels, could very well be the case. But before we can talk about what a future iteration of Outbreak can do better, we first need to take a look at what Cold War did wrong. Almost all of my problems with Outbreak and Cold War can be put into one of three categories. Lack of content, lack of challenge, and technical problems. Like I explained earlier, I'm only really going to be focusing on those first two. So, what is this lack of content I'm referring to? Well, like I explained earlier, there's one main objective and three side objectives per region. And this unfortunately makes up the overwhelming majority of content in an Outbreak region. Now, I've heard many Outbreak haters say that the game is too repetitive because you're basically just doing the same objectives on repeat. And while I think having to do the same objectives over and over is an easy thing to blame, I don't really think that's the real issue. 
While I do think that there really could be more variety in the objectives than just stand around a thing and kill zombies until the objective is completed, I think that the real issue has less to do with the objectives themselves and more on how the objectives are paced. There is a pitfall that a lot of modern open world games tend to fall into that I referred to in my Redfall video as the Far Cry problem. I define the Far Cry problem as a tendency for modern open world games to build this big open world, but then struggle to fill it with meaningful content. And the result is that a lot of the space in the open world is just meaningless and empty. And I think that is the real reason that Outbreak feels repetitive. It's not that you're doing the same objectives over and over, it's the fact that so much of your time is just spent running to the objectives because they're spaced so far apart in an open world that has barely anything to do in that space between objectives. Sure, there are zombies and other special enemies in that space, but then we come to the issue of the lack of challenge. Like I stated earlier, I often hear Outbreak haters saying that Outbreak is too repetitive because you're just doing the same objectives over and over. And the most common response that I see to that is that it really shouldn't be any more repetitive than running around in circles killing zombies over and over in a round-based map. So that begs the question, why is running around in circles killing zombies in a round-based map so much fun. While there are certainly a lot of factors at play here, I think one of the biggest ones is the fact that you are under constant threat in round-based zombies. The only reprieve that you get are the 10 seconds between the end of one round and the start of the next. At any other given time, there are zombies all around you. And when you kill zombies, more of them spawn in to take their place. And they spawn everywhere. They spawn in front of you. They spawn behind you. They spawn beside you. They spawn from holes in the ground. Hell, in some cases, they even spawn above you. This combines with the fact that most round-based maps are comprised of narrow passages and small arenas. I've often heard it said that, at least as far as the newer games go, that survival in zombies is often a game of movement. And while there are certainly other factors at play, I think I have to agree with that. At any given point in a round-based map, there's usually only like two or three escape options at any given time and you have to manage your movement based on availability of escape options, availability of your own supplies such as ammo for regular weapons and wonder weapons, and of course the positions of the zombies themselves. If you're trying to use an escape route that has zombies present, your only options for using it is to either kill them or dodge them. Given the constant spawning of the zombies and the limitations on how many routes you have to escape from any given scenario, it means that surviving in round-based zombies in most cases takes actual skill. I'm not trying to pose this as a one-size-fits-all design philosophy for zombies, but most zombies maps generally adhere to this philosophy with differing levels of challenge. Something like Shinonuma or Ascension with wider open training areas are easier, while maps like Five and Shangri-La, which are tighter, are going to be a lot harder. But this is one of the main reasons why round-based zombies is fun and engaging, and why Outbreak just simply isn't. Unlike the round-based maps, Outbreak barely restricts your movement. Hell, it's an entire fucking open world. The reason why maps like Shinonuma and Ascension are so easy is because they have some of the most wide-open training spots, but in an open world, you have pretty much a limitless amount of room to navigate. You have so many escape options available to you at any given time, which removes the need to manage those escape options. Meanwhile, the zombies don't constantly spawn around you unless you're doing an objective. But when you're just regularly traversing the open world, you only have to worry about zombies in front of you since you don't have to worry about them spawning beside you or behind you. Maybe you can see some zombies off to the side, but you don't actually have to worry about them unless you shoot them or otherwise get close to them. Maybe occasionally a few dogs might spawn unexpectedly. And when you enter a building, zombies usually will crawl out from under the furniture or break through the doors. But since areas that you've previously cleared will stay cleared, you don't ever have to worry about zombies sneaking up behind you. And even if there are a bunch of zombies in a particular area, you can always just retreat backwards because you know it's safe. And since you have pretty much a limitless amount of room to train them, killing them is very easy since they have to get up close to you to actually swipe you. The only exceptions are a handful of special enemies with ranged attacks, but they are extremely easy to focus down when they're the only enemies that provide any sort of threat in the regular open world gameplay. Otherwise, these encounters are just so easy that it just becomes boring. 
which is a problem when the actually interesting content, those being the objectives, are spread so far apart. And you always know where the objectives are located at any given time because they're always marked on the map. As soon as you spawn into any region, you'll likely open up your map, see where all the main and side objectives are located, and then plan a route out that will take you to all of them as fast as possible. And I'll pretty much never bother going to any of the areas that don't have a main or side objective in them, because the regular gameplay in the open world when traversing it just isn't interesting. For the most part, the only thing to do is just to hunt for regular loot crates. Which, yeah, that might sound like a reason to go explore the rest of the map to grab them, until you realize that most of what it gives you isn't very useful. A lot of it is just equipment, ammo magazines, and armor plates, which zombies drop so frequently that I don't really need to go out of my way to grab them since I can only have one type of lethal and one type of tactical anyway. And ammo is pretty much never an issue, so unless I'm just in the nosebleeds for armor, then there's not much reason to. There's also salvage, but I already get more than enough salvage to upgrade my weapons and armor from the regular zombie drops, as well as whatever loot crates I find on the way to objectives. I don't really feel the need to explore the rest of the world for them when I already get them at a good rate. And even if it does take me a little bit longer to, say, get my weapon to max rarity, the game is so easy anyway that I don't feel the need to rush. The only other thing is that sometimes you'll occasionally get a lower tier weapon from the loot crates, but even then, that gets outdone because the side objectives will often drop higher tier weapons as a reward. And as a matter of fact, the rewards you get from doing the side objectives just eclipse what you can get out of the loot crates so much that the loot crates just don't feel worthwhile to go out of my way and collect. Again, I'll grab them if I find them while going to the objectives, but I'm not going to scour the entire map for them. The only other real reason to explore are two hidden objectives, that being the Aether Orb, where basically, you shoot it, it drops points, you follow it, you shoot it, it drops points, you follow it, you shoot it, it drops points, and disappears. The other one is actually far more interesting. You can find a radio, which upon activation will emit feedback, which causes a whole bunch of zombies to spawn in around you. Upon clearing them out, you'll then have to find three radio amplifiers and change the signal to match that of the main radio. But whenever you change the signal on one of the amplifiers, there's a good chance that it will also emit feedback, in which case you gotta fend off more zombies. Additionally, the radio is only marked on your minimap when you get close enough, and there's no markings at all for the amplifiers, meaning you actually have to go and explore to find them. You're rewarded with a bunch of points as well as a new song for the War Tracks when you complete it, and whenever I come across it, it's genuinely fun to do. I wish that there were more side objectives like this that were hidden from the player to fill out the gaps between the ones that are on the map, but there just isn't. And even then, the radio objective actually counts as a side objective, you just don't see it on the main map screen. So, if there are only two side objectives visible on the map, you'll know to look for it. Granted, you do have to slog through the boring regular open world gameplay to find it, but it's always a real treat when I do come across it. If there was more of this kind of stuff in Outbreak, I would appreciate the exploration factor a hell of a lot more. The only other thing that comes even remotely close are the Demented Echoes, which are these flamey boys which when they spot you, they'll fly at you, explode, which deals a little bit of damage, but it will cause a bunch of zombies to spawn around you and then you have a combat encounter to do. And since these guys usually hide indoors, it means that it can be kind of challenging. Again, this is cool stuff, there just isn't nearly enough of it. Because of that, the sections between objectives are just kind of a wash. Which maybe I wouldn't mind this so much if they packed the fun objectives more densely into the map, but again, they don't. When I was recording b-roll footage for this video, this was a map of the first region that I had. This shows the main objective, side objectives, as well as the utilities. And you can see just how much of this blank negative space there is between them. I could very easily cut this map in half and still comfortably fit all the shit into it. There are only three side objectives here when this map could easily support about eight or nine. And this is how the Far Cry problem really harms Outbreak. They could have significantly improved the experience in one of two ways. Either add more content to these big-ass maps to fill them up and actually make them feel meaningful, 
or reduce the size of the map to suit the amount of content that's actually in here. Which, funnily enough, Armada did the latter. Most of the Outbreak regions were taken from fire team maps from the multiplayer, but Armada was instead taken from a combined arms map, which are significantly smaller. It takes place on these ships in the ocean. Which, while I guess technically the water is the textbook definition of negative space, one, the total size of the map is much smaller than the other regions, two, there's no expectation of you searching for anything in the water, and three, you can traverse the water so much more quickly. Hell, the three main ships have zip lines you can take instantly between them. Meanwhile, getting from the main ships to the minor ones is like, what, a 5 to 10 second swim? See, Armada has the same amount of content that something like Golova does, but it's packed into a much smaller area. Getting between them isn't as long or as tedious, which helps a lot with the pacing, and because of that, I have a lot more fun on Armada than I do on any of the other Outbreak regions. The ships also have a tighter design, which, while it doesn't completely fix the challenge problems, it definitely helps. Basically, Armada lacks the tedious downtime that drags down all of the other Outbreak regions, because all the other Outbreak regions pretty much don't really feel that differently from each other, at least in terms of how they play. Visually and aesthetically, sure, but but they're all way too big for the amount of content they have in them. There's no real mechanics that one map has and another doesn't to really differentiate them. The philosophy of the world design of those regions just doesn't change. And that's a real fucking shame because there was a ton of potential here. All flushed down the drain because Treyarch failed to consider that it's not about how big of a map you can make, but rather it's about how well you can use the space that you have. While that mostly sums up my issues of the lack of content, I do want to talk more about the lack of challenge. One of the big issues is that the mechanics in Zombies is designed with the round-based maps in mind, which, like I explained earlier, are a lot more intense. Treyarch pretty much took those mechanics and just mostly copy-pasted them in the Outbreak. These mechanics are designed to give you enough affordances for a more hectic, fast-paced, round-based experience. So when you take the mechanics that were designed for round-based zombies and then just plop them into an open-world environment, it takes what was already the easiest Treyarch Zombies entry and just makes it brain-dead easy. They only really adjusted the points values to account for the fact that you'll be encountering more zombies. Pretty much everything else is unchanged. When you take a game where you already have so little chance of actually dying, and then add all of the affordances and get out of jail free cards that round based zombies has and has a better justification for, pretty much any semblance of challenge is just gone. Now the objectives are certainly better, but while you do have the zombies constantly spawning around you and you do need to stay within close proximity to the objective, you still have plenty of room to train because these objectives still take place in the open world. The only exception is the holdout objective where you get transported to the Dark Aether, are locked in the building, and basically are forced to survive like it's a box round base map for a few minutes, and it's my favorite main objective because of it. Pretty much the same goes for most of the side objectives. Again, there is enjoyment to be had here, but I generally think it needs to be more challenging. There is one side objective that stands out in a really good way, and that's the fight against the Orda. The Orda is a big behemoth that roams around the region. When you encounter it, it'll start firing a bunch of projectiles at you, whether they be explosive or homing. It summons zombies to help it. Because it's big, it can make great strides and actually move surprisingly fast. You have to move and dodge its attacks while also dealing damage to it when the opportunity arises. It can actually try to retreat to heal itself from low health, which you can interrupt by shooting its arm. It's a fun, engaging fight that actually takes advantage of the open world. Fighting the Orda in Outbreak is genuinely challenging, and I always get a smile on my face when I see it's one of the side objectives. It's kind of like when you're roaming around the open world in Elden Ring and just come across a boss. The point being, this Orda fight plays to the strengths of Outbreak as an open world game. And if more of the objectives took advantage of the open world nature of Outbreak, I think it would be a lot more fun. But otherwise, much like the main objectives, most of the side objectives boil down to stand near a thing and kill zombies. While that mostly sums up my thoughts on Outbreak proper, there is also Outbreak survival to consider. The premise is simple. 
It's basically Outbreak, except your map is disabled, and so is automatic health regeneration. Instead, health can only be recovered through active means, either by picking up health-restoring items that drop from zombies or loot crates, using the Stim Shot tactical ability, using the Healing Aura specialist ability, or meleeing enemies with your melee upgraded to Tier 5. While this doesn't fix a lot of my overarching design issues with Outbreak, I do find that Outbreak survival is more engaging than regular Outbreak. You might still have a lot of open room to train, yes, but you can't just run away and automatically heal if you get hit a bunch of times. Unless you happen to have some stim shots on you at the moment, you have to go in, kill the zombies, and pick up the health restoring items they drop. It also gives me more of an incentive to seek out the loot crates. Not a huge one, mind you, but if I'm in the nosebleeds for health, I'm more likely to seek out a loot crate for the health restoring items. It also makes the objectives more intense since the zombies are constantly spawning around me. When combined with the lack of automatic health regeneration, it's a lot more engaging. Additionally, since I only know where the main objective is but not the side objectives, it means I have a reason to actually go and explore the world. Of course, this is a bit of a double-edged sword. Board. On one hand, I do have a tangible reason to actually want to explore the open world, but on the other hand, there isn't any more content in Outbreak Survival than there is in regular Outbreak. Which means I could potentially just be spending more time with the tedious open world gameplay. Still, the increase in challenge makes this my preferred way to play Outbreak and Cold War. All that's left to cover now are the two easter eggs. Outbreak easter egg number one starts with a radio step similar to the side objective. I liked it there, and I like it here. Unfortunately, the next step is to run around the map to four different monkey locations to find the one that has the dead drop. It's just more running around the open world until you get the one that you need. Then just take them to the projector on the map, do the slide thing, bada bing, bada boom. Not a huge fan of this step since it's mostly just running around to one of four preset locations. However, things greatly pick up once you reach the silo. You'll enter the silo and will have to release the lockdown, but when you do, you'll be tasked with finding three keys. While you're finding the three keys, you'll have to constantly fight up zombies that are constantly spawning in an enclosed area. This is probably the most fun I have in Outbreak, and the reason for that is because it pretty much just plays like a round-based map, except you're just not advancing through rounds. Once you get the three keys and you turn them in the right order, you then have the Legion boss fight. And this is honestly the most fun boss fight in Cold War. What's interesting is that not only is this fight challenging, but you also have to do it under the gun of a time limit. I remember when I beat this boss, I only had about, like, 30 seconds left, and let me tell you, it felt so cathartic. Unfortunately, the second easter egg isn't as good because it's just way too fucking easy. You basically go through a red rift, and then fly through four more red rifts in midair. You get a thing, talk to Ravenov, then you go to the sanatorium, run around the sanatorium collecting a bunch of random shit to build the rover, then do a slightly modified version of the rover escort main objective, except this time if you stray too far from the rover, you take damage. And then you do an extraction, except with an Ordo to fight. I find the Ordo fight to be fun, and I kinda like the rover stuff, but everything else is just tedious. And that about sums up my thoughts on Outbreak and Cold War. Honestly, I don't really remember my opinion of this mode being as negative as it is, but having played it again for this review, I just have to come to the realization that I, I just really don't like Outbreak. I genuinely don't remember my opinion being this negative. I used to think that I liked Outbreak, but just had the several issues with it, but the playthroughs I did for this video, I did not get that much enjoyment out of. But how could Outbreak improve in Modern Warfare 3? Well, the big things would be to ramp up the challenge and improve the pacing. Either shrink down the world size to fit the amount of content that's in each region, or increase the amount of content within each region to fit the world size. Additionally, the standard open world gameplay needs to be improved. Imagine if while going between objectives there was just this constant onslaught of zombies constantly spawning around you, and you basically have to fight for every inch of progress on your way to the objective. This way, even if you're not doing an objective, the gameplay is more fun and engaging. Now, to be fair, I'm not really sure how I would balance out the infinite training space problem, as pretty much the only solutions I could think of is to make Outbreak not an open world. But then again, if it has the constant zombie spawns around you and combines it with the mechanics from Outbreak Survival where your health doesn't regenerate, maybe that might be enough. 
I would also like more objectives that utilize the open world in more creative and interesting ways. The Radio Objective and the Orta Objective are excellent examples of what I'm talking about, because the majority of the objectives are honestly quite basic. Now, obviously, all of this would need to be play-tested to make sure it actually works well, and I'm sure y'all could find plenty of tweaks and improvements to these ideas. But the fact of the matter is, even though I don't enjoy Outbreak, I do think that it does have a foundation that is ripe for expansion and improvement. And that is what I would like to see. And with that, we have reached the end of this video, so if you enjoyed, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more, and tell me what you think of Outbreak and Cold War, and what you would like to see changed. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, that's it. Peace!